Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to have an object in a frame reveal text or a logo, whatever you want. You see this all over the place now. It's very cute, very easy to do. So we'll hop into Resolve and get started. Here you can see that we have, we'll go to our edit page, this little clip of this cool palette thing and then whoop, it comes off and gets revealed. Nice. So we're going to have some text be revealed underneath that and it'll be good. And I have a review of this coming out one of these days. I just got to finish it. So the first thing we're going to do is in our edit page, we'll alt drag up and duplicate it. And we'll put that two tracks above just because we're going to put our text down here. And you know, since we're here, we might as well put some text. So drag from our effects library, go to titles and bring some text in. Let's put it over here so we can see it. And we will type in I like your review and we'll change this to, oh, that's interesting this and center it and we'll increase the tracking because I think that looks cool and we'll put it back underneath so now you can see we can't see anything because we need to have this object reveal our text so we will click on this top clip go into our color page and now I'm sure a lot of the people that watch this channel on a regular basis or at least semi-regular basis are thinking all right we're going to go ahead and track that bad boy it's going to be great it's going to be fast and easy well Resolve Tracker isn't amazing for like visual effects type stuff. It's really good for color grading, but it's not the most accurate tracker in the world. So for this thing, it's actually way easier to just do it by hand because it's so fast. So we're going to create a new power window and we're going to make a square slash rectangle one. Okay, drag it up over here and I'll show you what happens if we try and track it. It'll get us part of the way there. So we got this, turn off 3D, track forward. You see, it, it's not not the best. So this slips off, and, and we don't want that. So we'll go ahead and reset this go back to whatever frame it was on. There we go. And then we will go ahead and click this little keyframe icon over here in our keyframes tab. If you don't have that, it's just this little guy right here. So it could be that. Now it's this. So click this. That turns on automatic keyframing. And we'll nudge this guy. And you see that automatically creates a keyframe over here and over here. That's great. We'll scoot forward. That's whatever it starts coming off. So we'll create a frame right before it starts to move, just so we are good to go. And scoot it forward a bit. Actually scoot it forward to the last frame right before the end, right before it exits. This is just how I like to do it. You can go through each frame and do it one at a time. But, you know, who's got time for that? So we've got this. That's pretty close. We'll feather it out a little bit more. So there's some motion blur. And then we'll go and even out where we need to. So whoop. just like this, really, really relaxing, just Zen like stuff. And you see, we still might have to keyframe it on almost every frame, but going the beginning and the end like that, at least gets the window moving in the generally right direction, which is pretty nice. And you can make this as accurate or not accurate as you want. Since people are watching this, I'll do not the worst job in the entire world but also since i'm having to talk during it i'm not going to do the best job in the entire world especially if it keeps goofing around like that there we go and we're getting there a couple more little keyframes i'll call that good to go yeah i think that's good enough and then we'll move it off on this last one Whoop. there we go cool all right so now we can see if we hit shift H, we've got it all cut out looking great. If we go back to our edit page, you can see it still doesn't reveal our text. And that's because we need to get the alpha from this mask that we just created. So we do that by right clicking in our node panel and then going add alpha output. You see this little blue output guy here. Ooh, you can move that around. Cool. Did not know that. Then you take your little blue triangle and you click and drag it over to the alpha output. And then just like that, we should be able to see our text gets revealed. Nice. So just that simple. If we play through, you can see nice and easy. Comes right off. Now, what if you want to grade this? We don't want to grade one clip and then the other and, you know, go through that mess. So what we'll do is go back to our color page and we'll select both clips, right click, and go to add into new group. And we'll call this 
palette text reveal, etc. And then we'll go up into our node panel, click on clip, and now you can go to group post clip. And sorry about this weird scaling issue. Don't know why that's going on, but it doesn't bother me too much. And now you see we get this new thing, and it will affect both of our clips. So if we head forward to where this happens, see it's affecting both of our clips there. So we'll go ahead and do a quick little grade on here. I'm just going to do a quick color space transform. And this is BMD Film, Direct 709. And hit Alt-S, create a new node. I will cool it down a little bit, add a little bit of magenta. And then I'll just add a quick little LUT on top. This is a pretty hip product, so we will go ahead and use a hip LUT just because we're going fast. And Swiss LUTs are available at mistymedia.com slash product. So there we go. That looks pretty trendy. We'll make the text, you know, a less bold color. Um, what looks cool? Maybe we'll just keep it at white. Dark gray? Dark gray is much cooler. You can see that our mask isn't super great right there, so we can go back to our color page, go back to clip, and select this guy. And we can move this up. So it cuts off a little bit more. And that'll automatically put a keyframe in there. Nice. All right, so just that easy. Uh, since we're here, this really just begs for a vignette. Sorry, I can't help myself. You can stop watching. I'm just going to talk about how you should go to mesemedia.com slash products and buy stuff and or subscribe to the Mises Media YouTube channel and or like, favorite, share, etc. Is favoriting even still a thing on YouTube? Who knows? And also leave a comment with any other tutorial ideas that you have. Oh, here's a bonus tip for you. Since we have this mask made and ready to go, we can actually sort of bring our product out a little bit more. So right now it's a little bit flat, so we'll add some contrast, brighten it up some. I'll probably, since this is sort of a monochrome thing, I'll reduce the saturation on it a bit. You can see that's happening on the hands just a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it for just how fast this shot is. So there you go. Now it just pops it out that little bit more. So anyway, like I said before, subscribe to Mies Media YouTube channel. Check out MiesMedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of great stuff. You saw one of the LUTs from the Swiss LUTs pack featured today. It's great. Hipster 07. Good stuff if you need that. Good stuff if you don't need it. All sorts of good things. Share this video with your friends so they can see how to make cool stuff, you know. Because why not? Everyone wants to put text coming out behind stuff. It's very cool. Lots of people like it. All right. Anyway, once again, I'm Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.